come out here because I love um, having kind of cut flowers in the house but I always struggle a bit because I also like to leave them for my bees but um, I'm fortunate to have this for my doorstep and although I don't suggest you go galloping off into um, fields of corn to help yourself um, for decoration purposes there are some things which I like to do uh, which isn't actually inconveniencing the farmer or taking anything from the crop so one thing we've got here, you can see these tall stems, these tall stems, these are wild oats and these are a weed but they're quite beautiful and they're quite often on the margins where the sprayer hasn't got them, you get the old patch in the middle of the field as well but if you see these on the side of a cornfield these are um, not part of the crop, they're weeds but they are quite pretty so you can help yourself to these with impunity and they've got lovely strong tall stems so they look good in a vase. Here we have a footpath and because a lot of animals use it, so the deer use their sand badgers and foxes um, and obviously walkers, you quite often find on the kind of um, sides of the uh, path you get a bit of damage so like this down here. So you can see that this one's snapped off here but actually it's a perfectly good stem of wheat. So there's a few like this where they've been squashed but actually the the um, heads of corn are, are kind of still in good nick and so I'm going to see what I can find down here. So I've got my roadkill wheat as I like to call it and um, I'll take it indoors and sift through. There's a couple of stems here which, having cut them, they don't look quite so marvellous um, in broad daylight. So they'll be going to chickens, who will be most appreciative. So I've got my various, various, various foliage bits here. And um, I've got this lovely milk bottle from um, Claw Hatch Farm, which is a biodynamic farm shop that I go to quite frequently. Um, so I'm going to put the wheat in that, I think. And then I've got this big vase here, which is a kind of raffia coloured, um, covered glass vase. And I'm going to put that down in the fireplace, which will last about 10 minutes once the rabbit comes in, but I can try. So. I'm going to um, start off with the wheat. So really it's just a question of taking off some of the, uh, the top um, bits of grass. You don't need to take all of it off all of them, um, but you know, so a few look quite good, but you probably want to take the bottom ones off. Now, some of these are a bit longer and I'm going to just see how they all look. That one's clearly a bit tall. Um, obviously it's better to cut them too tall than too short. So, oh, that one's bent. So that one will be going to chickens. Obviously if you end up with a few short ones you can, you know, maybe think of a a sort of smaller or lower display or use a little a smaller vase or receptacle for them. Some of these are really dry so they're nice and golden all the way up the stem. Others, like this one, are still quite green so it's important to bear in mind that they can sort of go a bit mouldy if they're not completely dry, especially in a narrow necked vessel like this. Again, that one's a bit, is that one going to work? No, it's not quite that. Another one for the chickens. So just bear in mind that you might need to leave these on a windowsill or um, somewhere dry and sunny just to sort of properly ripen them. I'm going to be spraying them glyphosate, which is what normally happens. Right, so that's 
all of them in the milk bottle. I'm just going to shorten some of these stems. And you can also sort of tweak them a little bit so they, they kind of poke through their neighbours and then you get a bit more of a, a sort of um, angle so it doesn't look quite so much like them all just being stuck in one thing. Um, when you're making any sort of bouquet or flower arrangement, you've got to work out whether you just want it to look good from this plane. So in other words, it doesn't matter what's happening at the back as long as you can only you know, as long as what's going on at the, the front and maybe round to the sides works. But most of the time, certainly in my house, it's got to work from all angles. So it's it's important not to have too sort of flat backed with everything out the front. So just sort of play around with the stems. And as I said, you can feed them through uh, different sides of the bottle. It's not that easy because obviously you don't want to kind of kink the stems. But there we are. That's pretty rustic, isn't it? This one's a bit long. Um, just sort of have a look at the kind of balance of the arrangement. And also you find, I mean, like that stem is quite bent. So try and sort of use that to your advantage and twist it round so that it's it's facing the way you want it to. But it doesn't matter too much, it's just a kind of rustic display. So I've got these left over and these ones which are rather short, so I might see if I can do something else with these in a minute. That one actually looks a bit manky. But so you know, only use the best ones. There we go. So with the wild oats. These can be a little bit longer because they're going in the fireplace. But obviously, not too long, I need to be able to fit them. So I'm just going to cut this one, pop it in and just check and see if it fits in the fireplace. Yeah, so I can't really go much taller than that because that, that just fits under the mantle. Um, so I'll work on that as my base height. Because this one's going in the fireplace, it can be kind of um, flat on the back and facing more out to the front, so that's what I'm endeavouring to do with, with just poking the stems in and focusing on the side and the front rather than trying to get everything in a kind of more circular arrangement. There we go. So I'm going to put this in the fireplace and have a bit of a sort of um, tinker around with it and uh, make sure it looks even. Here are the wild oats in their bars in the fireplace and as you can see I've also got some oh, I've got a cat I've got some candlesticks and the whole thing's sitting on a slice of tree and these are little Dariol moulds which I picked up in a charity shop and I put little tea lights in them which looks quite pretty and those are just rather cheap um, concrete candlesticks, which I um, painted with a sort of stone coloured paint. So that's the fireplace display. And obviously we'll have to see what the rabbit makes of it. I think I know what the rabbit will make of it. Um, if the cat doesn't get there first. But anyway, I think it looks quite pretty. Here I've got the wheat and in its milk bottle. And I've also got some dried artichoke flowers there. And I've just kind of um, evened it up because obviously, like I said, you need to find out where you're going to be looking at it from and 
this is the lounge, so I look at it from all angles really, but mainly from this direction and from over here because these are, this is where the doorways are. So I've just got a few extras just to complete the vignette, as you can see that. I left these to dry and that was decided to flower. That's a little um, pottery. It's actually a um, based on a medieval um, design, but yeah, here we are. Let's sit from the other angle. So just really, really simple. An old milk bottle, a few stems of roadkill wheat, some dried artichokes, and a few bits I've picked up around the house. smirky as I as I make these just because um, growing up my kids would always say to me why do you have to put vegetables in everything and you know any cake I made particularly my middle child my older daughter Amber would say oh, what sort of what sort of what's this got in it like you know courgettes or lettuce or cabbage or something and I'd say no there's nothing wrong with having, you eat carrot cake, you like carrot cake, why would courgette be any different? It's disgusting. Anyway, my son, um, my oldest child, my son Tristan, he would, he, well, he's, I think he probably still can, he can detect banana in kind of parts per million. So I'd make a, a sort of gallon bucket of pancake batter and I think, oh, I've got a bit of a, a bit of a sort of overripe banana sitting in the fruit bowl, I'd chuck that in and he'd be eating it and go, you put banana in this, didn't you? Anyway, so my younger daughter, Rosie, whether she's just wise differently or just a, a sort of, um, if you can't be some joining kind of thing, is a little bit more, you know, habituated to sort of vegetable based based cakes. And I think why not? You know, it doesn't sort of taste of the vegetable, but it adds some really good fiber and, and that kind of thing. And it adds a, inevitably adds some sort of moisture and, and sort of toothiness to the cake. So I personally really like you know vegetable cakes and I will when they start coming into season oh there's this absolutely incredible parsnip and maple syrup cake I mean come on so um, I'm going to make some beetroot brownies and um, I do really realize it's a bit sort of sacrilegious to take some beautiful organic locally grown um, beetroot and boil it and put it in a cake I'm sorry about that but um, beetroot's one of those things I'm I'm sometimes really good with it and sometimes I just can't seem to get my head around what to do with it so I think it's always a good idea with veg especially if you like me you get a veg box and so you can't always guarantee what you're going to have I think it's a really good idea to have some sort of backup things and um, I, I realized the other day I actually eat a lot of fruit and vegetables I then realized most of it is in kind of cake or crumble or cobbler form which perhaps isn't isn't the sort of the point but anyway I'm going to make some um, beetroot chocolate brownies I'm using a river cottage recipe and I'm going to do a half quantity just because this amount makes quite a few I haven't got enough chocolate buttons and um, also a friend of mine's coming around with a huge cheesecake and frankly I know when I'm beaten so I'm just going to make a half quantity but I will put the uh, recipe up somewhere so that if you want to make a full or half quantity you can Okay, so I will uh, now get on with measuring out the stuff. Content 73%, and uh, they're the cocoa loco, they're really, really yummy. I 
probably just have breakfast, otherwise it'd be sort of one for the cake, one for me. Just gonna pop it in the oven just to sort of use the oven the warm it up oven heat to just melt the chocolate a bit. I've got to keep a bit of an eye on it, I'll turn it down. Uh, this oven heats up really quickly. So that's the chocolate and the butter, and and I'm gonna weigh out the dry ingredients. I'm gonna put the eggs and the um, sugar in um, to the KitchenAid so because I need to beat it. Um, oh, it's a bit too much. Um, it says to use three eggs, and obviously if you've got half a recipe, um, or doing a half recipe, it means you can't have half an egg necessarily. So what I'm doing is using two little eggs. I've got one hen that just lays these really ridiculously pullet kind of eggs. So this is a this is a regular sized egg, and this is one of hers. So I'm going to use two of them because I kind of figure that's going to be the same as one and a half. crunch these up and give them back to the chickens. So I've got the beetroot here. I actually, um, can microwave it but like I said is that a microwave so um, I actually put this in the oven wrapped in foil and a splash of water uh, while I was cooking sourdough earlier so it's just um, it is cooked and I'm just going to grate it now <laughs> Grated cooked beetroot. And just fold it in gently. I've lined the base of this tin with some greaseproof paper and um, buttered all that as well. It makes quite a. I prefer brownies which are quite sort of thin and squidgy. So it's rather shallow and squidgy, I don't think thin in relation to brownies is ever the right term to use, but um, there we are. So I shall now pop that in the oven, which is at 180, see how they get on. Gotta say, they're pretty yummy. Really squidgy and delicious. I possibly could have cooked them for another two or three minutes, but to be honest, they're really nice. And they're not quite as sweet. They haven't got anything like as much sugar as regular brownies. And um, yeah, thoroughly recommend. <laughs>